What's going on guys? So if you clicked on this video, I'm gonna go ahead and assume that you are somewhat like me, and I am totally a seasonal gamer. What I mean by this is that there are certain titles that I come back to year after year because I love playing certain games that to me, correspond to the seasonal calendar. An easy example of this is that I still whip out my PS2 every Christmas season to go ahead and hit the slopes in SSX3, a game that when I see snow on the ground, I just can't help but want to play. So this video is obviously not coming out during the winter season, it's fall, so you can probably guess that yeah, this is going to be a list of my absolute favorite horror games that I need to play once the calendar hits October 1st. With Halloween coming up, it's the perfect time of year to turn off all the lights, put on your best headset, and open the closest window for a smell of crisp, fallen leaves and the cold wind that sends chills down your spine. Kicking off my favorite Halloween time games is an oldie, but clearly a goodie since it was recently brought back to our latest generation of consoles with a remastered version. Of course, it's Resident Evil 4. I had the living shit scared out of me when I played this game during its initial release. Granted, I was young, but it's the claustrophobic camera angles and the clunkiness of movement that really turns this game into a horror masterpiece. There aren't too many set up jump scares as most horror games these days rely on. Like I said, it's the tight camera angle and the slowed movement that creates a sense of constant tension as you're simply moving about the world or while deep in combat. I'll never forget this. It was the middle of the day, I was in the village area early in the game. I was simply walking backwards slowly while I took out an angry mob of cultists that were out to get me. It wasn't until it was too late that the bag-headed butcher wielding a chainsaw came into my screen from behind me, causing me to jump out of my seat as my head was slowly sawed off. It's moments like these that I feel made this game the best out of the series. There is this 180 degree turn system that you can utilize at any time to immediately see what's behind you, but more often than not, you don't want to know. Whether you played this game back in the day or unfortunately missed its initial release, now is a perfect time to spend next to nothing to experience the classic Resident Evil 4 gameplay on the latest gaming platforms with a modern frame rate. Moving on, we have my favorite horror series of all time, Outlast. And my god, can this game get intense. With the emphasis on flight over fight, you are a defenseless reporter investigating a remote psychiatric hospital named Mount Massive Asylum, located deep in the mountains of Lake County, Colorado. The game takes on darkness in such a clever way, utilizing your camera as a source of night vision when things get even darker. Going hand in hand with the camera is obviously batteries, which need to be replenished in order to keep your night vision activated. This causes the player to really ration the night vision, creating these moments of regret when you either face the darkness blind or find yourself without batteries in a desperate time of need. The first person experience from Outlast really won me over as it doesn't hold your hand. It isn't always clear where to go next, how to get away from an enemy, or where to find mission objectives. It really immerses you in the feeling that you are totally helpless and that your character has as much knowledge about getting out of the asylum as you do. The story definitely ties into the gameplay well, and I felt a great sense of pride when I finished the game. I actually haven't played through the second entry in the series yet, but that's all for a good cause. I now have all the proper recording gear, lights, and cameras to be able to play through the game entirely with a face cam to show just how genuinely terrifying it can be. If you like seeing horror around Halloween time, subscribe to my channel now and be notified when my Outlast 2 face cam reaction series goes live. Going back in time to the proud days of the Xbox 360, as the Resident Evil series started to fade away in terms of quality games, a new series was born that clearly stole the show, Dead Space. Taking the Resident Evil formula and mixing it into a sci-fi setting may not sound like a recipe for success, but in every aspect, it was. Dead Space took the claustrophobic, over-the-shoulder view and expanded on it by locking you, the player, on a massive spaceship called the Ishimura with tight corridors and oh yeah, it's infested with beautifully designed, terrifying necromorphs. The game shines as its sci-fi elements become more and more apparent. You learn to use stasis, which can be used on both enemies to slow them down, as well as environmental objects such as faulty doors as you're traversing puzzle levels. Oxygen becomes an issue as you may find yourself needing to get on the exterior of the ship for whatever the reason may be. Whatever it is, do it quickly. The inventory system, crafting, leveling up, and the equipment store are all done in a way that seems absolutely perfect for a video game. It's so easy to operate as well as to get a sense of what you need to do in order to unlock upcoming opportunities. I can honestly say that in games 1 and 2, there was no repetition. No tasks were the same, level designs were all unique, every weapon and tool worked in its own unique way, and you can customize your loadout to traverse the necromorph-ridden spaceship in the best way you see fit. Please take note though that in all I just said about the Dead Space series, I really only associate with the first and second game. The third game, Dead Space 3, doesn't live up to the standard that the two prior games set. I think the third game fell off the tracks due to the fact that they were focused on cooperative gameplay style. It feels more like a cover shooter, such as Gears of War, and the setting just isn't dark and claustrophobic as the series seems to need. Nonetheless, the first two games are screaming your name 
game if you've never played them and want to experience the genuine fear they evoke. Going back to the Resident Evil series, I didn't touch on the two games at once for a reason. Resident Evil 7 turned the franchise upside down in a great way. Like I said before, after Resident Evil 4, the series got a little lackluster. But with the release of Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, we got a first person take on the horror that Capcom provides so flawlessly. Unlike Resident Evil 5 and Resident Evil 6, the gameplay emphasizes horror and exploration over action. No Resident Evil game since the first has done such a great job as Resident Evil 7 at making you feel scared and helpless. You play as Ethan, who is not a special forces agent, he's not a police officer, he's just a regular dude with no particular combat skills. When enemies start popping up within the Baker house, oftentimes the best tactic is simply to run like hell. The game mainly takes place, like I said, on the Baker's estate out in Louisiana, and it's naturally a frightening scene. You are both trying to stay away from every member of the Baker family as well as the molded enemies lurking in certain areas of the property. The story has you cleverly going back and forth throughout the house as you gradually unlock more and more doors that will help you get to where you need to be. It is in no way repetitive and really makes you try to memorize the layout of the house so that you can tiptoe around enemies and places you don't want to interfere with. The game consists of a perfect relationship between puzzles, exploration, and combat-heavy sequences or boss battles. It's uniquely divided up by who you are interacting with at the time. Each member of the Baker family has a certain zone of the house, and as you move from zone to zone, you actually experience the personality that is perfectly portrayed through each character. The game provides astonishing in-game scares, as well as so many cinematic sequences that make your hair stand up as you reluctantly push forward. If I had to tell someone that wanted a great horror game to play one of the Resident Evil games, I would have to choose 7 over 4, as the first person experience and modern graphics and lighting capabilities really send you to the Baker house in person. If you're so lucky to have a VR platform available to use, I dare you to make it all the way through this game. Resident Evil 7 puts the series back on track and I cannot wait for the next entry in the series. Now I've touched on all the main titles that I get really excited for come Halloween time, but for those looking for a few more options that maybe they haven't experienced before or maybe have never even heard of, let's knock out a handful more in some honorable mentions. Little Nightmares. Little Nightmares is a great example of a game that manages to inspire fear and disgust without using traditional blood and gore. The game puts you in control of a young girl called Six and has you navigate a frightening world that's far too big for her, populated by a wide array of giant and grotesque creatures. You don't have to fight these creatures, you just have to sneak around the world and hide to get past them in what is absolutely a platforming puzzle game. But Little Nightmares is a great horror game in that it perfectly creates this feeling of helplessness while also making it clear that you're totally capable of escaping. It takes familiar and domestic areas of the home that should be comforting and turns them on their head by making them repulsive and unsafe. The Evil Within 2 The Evil Within series comes from the mind behind Resident Evil, Shinji Mikami. And if that doesn't give you enough reason to go pick it up, I'm not sure what will. This is a third-person survival horror game that'll put you into a nightmarish world populated by grotesque and frightening enemies. However, with a recent update, you can actually now experience the full game in a brand new first-person perspective mode. The sequel, The Evil Within 2, reached shelves in 2017 just in time for Halloween, with the same lead from the first game once again taking on dark powers beyond his understanding in the warped reality of STEM. In some ways, it's regular horror fare, a seemingly idyllic town, dark supernatural forces, and a lost little girl up to the ante. But the way it blends classic horror stalking with more modern action elements makes this a must play for fans of the genre. Dead by Daylight Dead by Daylight is going to stand out on this list by being a horror multiplayer experience, one where a single player takes on the role of a savage serial killer while four others flee for their lives. It's a thrilling twist on the usual PvP combat, with a host of original characters each with their own advantages in play as either survivor or killer. There are plenty of tricks and strategies to execute in each map with a character progression system that should keep you coming back. For the horror junkies out there, you can also unlock or download characters from Saw, A Nightmare on Elm Street, or The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, making it the perfect game to pick up and go ahead and play for Halloween. Slenderman the eight pages. Released in mid-2012, Slender is based all around long pauses followed by sudden movements that are totally unexpected. In other words, jump scares. Slender is essentially a horror movie in video game form. Your mission is simple. Don't get killed. 
collect the eight pages of the book and run. The thing pursuing you, directly inspired by the popular Slenderman meme, is faceless, eerie, lanky man in a pinstriped suit. Basically, he's the perfect horror game villain. The game relies heavily around the player having virtually no resources beyond a flashlight and the ability to jog. Naturally, both of which are limited for obvious reasons, making escape all the more difficult. Overall, Slender is a fun, not-so-clever horror game that is guaranteed to scare you senseless nevertheless. So that wraps up my honorable mentions. As always, thanks for checking out the video. I am definitely going to be putting out more videos like this. Please, please, please feel free to hit me with a subscribe, guys. If I can start profiting from YouTube as a hobby, I will sink every last penny back into the hobby to provide the best content I can. I sincerely enjoy doing this, and I'd love to be able to pull back from my day job and invest more time here. Anyways, give the video a like if you've made it this far. And if you have a game to add to the list, throw it in the comments down below so that everyone can see. I absolutely love chatting with you guys, and I want to build a community around this channel where we can all interact and build some great memories, also while reflecting on some old ones. <laughs> Nostalgia is like a drug, guys. Gaming played a huge role in my childhood, and I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. Have a happy Halloween, guys, and go scare the shit out of yourselves.